when the name Quad Pink came about. When they just talk an electric jolt. The real ugly side of, of humanity. And their music sounds like it. I always wanted to be a band that was approachable to people. And that was just regular ass people. Yo, what's up? So before I start this episode, I want to bring up two really good friends of mine that I've met along the way. They've been the backbone and really the biggest supporters of this podcast since day one. Everything visually you see with this podcast has been done by Wither Designs and Benny Bones Art. And it could be your band next. Check them out on social media. Get yourself something unique and original. And yeah, let's do this. I was watching your documentary film, uh, Viany. That's how I pronounce it. And um, it is it is well pronounced. She she says that Viany more like a. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that film, I don't know how I found I think it was on Tubi, I'm pretty sure. And um as a documentary filmmaker, an aspiring documentary filmmaker, I was like super drawn to it. And I I um I think the story was like really well thought out it like really portrayed like this really eerie atmosphere. And um, yeah, I just want to reach out because like from your point of view, you did a great job. I mean, like I, I was like blown away. Thank you. That's amazing to hear. Uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so, like the story is hers. Yeah, the story is hers, but I love then like the, the more like the artistic approach that pretty much like an open my opens like my inner world to the people <laughs> so like the the here here is side of things uh that's about that's about how how i how i see the world and i like my my viewpoint you like at things yeah i think what was cool about the film is like you um you know you're a photographer um and like there was a lot of pictures you know that left a lot of like open air um and like you know researching more into documentaries people are always saying like you should push to keep the open air there because it it, it builds the story more it gives like the the viewer um not like an overload you know what i mean and um yeah it was great and the in the black and the black and white gave it a good feel um so i wanted to i wanted to ask so so where are you from um Kind of give me your backstory and how you got into filmmaking. At the moment, I'm I'm splitting my time between Helsinki, Finland, and and New York. Pretty much like fifty fifty in both countries, and I've mainly worked here, like in the in the East Coast. But yeah, as you can probably hear from my accent, I'm I was born born in Helsinki, and uh, that's where that's where I'm from. And um, I got into like photography like 15 years ago. I started as a as an advertising creative, and I still do that. I still have clients in that in that field. And um, yeah, 15 years ago, started doing documentary photography, and then at some point, just felt that that's not enough for me that's some parts of the stories somehow were left untold and uh didn't go to film school but my friend did and since my friend went to a film school i was i was just thinking that it can't be that hard making a future length film so i just started (laughs) and i had like no expectations and uh, I just wanted to see, like, a, <laughs> what is the process like? And, uh, yeah, that, that's that's how I started. And I just asked, like, a few questions, like, from, from my filmmaker friends. Now, what should I really, like, focus on and pay, uh, pay attention to? And all they said is that basically everything that happens more on the visual side, that, that's just your artistic impression. And no one can like say that if something's good or bad quality, but just pay attention to audio. Uh, audio needs to be clear and, and well well done because if if that's not being like thought of and well somehow polished, then people are actually able to like uh, 
spot a spot a fake or just a well not a, not a fake but that they're able to tell if the person hasn't really been doing that been working in the industry for that that long so that that's basically how, how I started I started started by making a future length film that was my first 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 attempt of you know, first attempt in in filmmaking so did you um I mean, thinking back, would you go back to film school? Because right now, I, I'm just kind of exactly like you. I'm just like going for it. Like I have a passion for it, and I got no expectations. Um, if you were to backtrack to, you know, I don't know, fifteen, ten years ago, like would you would you consider college? I mean, it's a big financial debt. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, in in the film, it it really. It isn't that 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 much? I, it's it would just be mainly time that it would have like required like three three four years of my my time. Uh, I would not. So I, I well, I've released uh, three feature length films so far, and and uh, I'm now working on three three projects. So like in in few years, I have like six six feature length films in my pocket <laughs> yeah that's, and, that's uh, good and all of the previous ones all the all the ones that have been released they have like won awards here and there around around the world and ma mainly here in the in the u.s so i've i've honestly felt that that at least like the the, the awards and, and and the fact that a few of them have been like shown on like yeah platforms like Amazon Prime and and Tubi and and tens and tens and tens of other like smaller platforms. It has like given given me validation that I don't really need that yeah. diploma or that 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 paper. But for sure, it, it still has an effect. Like when when I or when I go visit like film festivals around the world and and I meet other filmmakers. It it is still true that most of them have an like an official like a some sort of diploma there in the background or official training, and at the beginning of basically all the discussions or conversations that I have, them I I do kind of feel like an underdog. Yeah, I yeah. I don't always like use the same or the most official like vocabulary and and don't know all the yeah. little little <laughs> the, like the... film school things yeah, yeah. that. That are kind of like tales where when people like kind of use the terms, then other other people who have like gone through the same path, and then they're able to tell like that they are one of us, yeah, and uh, I'm one of them, yeah, like an I, out, out, more like an outsider. I I've never been to a film festival, so what does that consist of? Where where do you go? I know New York City is pretty popular for. Um, film shoots all the time i mean um do you like it out there and where yeah where are these film festivals Men, yeah the city has a lot of film festivals so i've been like, screening more films here um uh one of the latest ones that i visited and had my film there was in it's like a smaller but still like an influential one in the Mammoth Lakes in, in California, in y y Yosemite. And um, the, well, for example, that, because that, that, that comes to my mind when I think about like a quintessential weird film festival experience, like um, the place is, was it like four or five, you know, like six hours out, outside Los Angeles. And I had a driver pick me up in LA and we drove through the deserts listening to old old school old uh country and uh <laughs> Bruce Springsteen and uh and uh Kat Stevens and uh and the driver she she was from or originally from from like Poland and just tours the world like from festival to festival works as a like a producer and uh just, just does all kinds of things like a real hardcore film festival buff 
really just enjoys the festival organization and and uh, and stuff like that. But yeah, we we got to the we got to the got to Mammoth Lakes, and the first thing they did there is to take me take me out to the desert, and uh, we just took a bath in the in the hot springs, and and then for the next six six days we just stayed inside in these little theaters that they still have there even though it's like a really small place we just stood in stood inside and watched films all over the world and and uh, i really love the i really love the experience it's like from the perspective of like people who really understand film love film and uh, appreciate the Kind of like the film uh, art of filmmaking that we gather in these somewhat exotic places, and everyone knows that we are like massively privileged, and uh, we know that we come come from from that, and at the same time, mm, we want to like also honor the the history of filmmaking, uh, at least like. The festivals that I've, I've been attending, there there is this like an aura of aura of honor that people do take filmmaking seriously, even though everyone now has a camera that they could like just shoot a movie, and everyone yeah has the technology. Uh, but still, it's it's not easy, especially compared to like for example, yeah, I I used to focus on photography and you, you can start start the project today and end end the project by by midnight but when it comes to my phone making if i started started today it'll be it'll be done in two years so yeah and, so uh, so i was gonna ask about the the one that i watched how long did it take you to um compile that like get it completed basically two two years like two years. first yeah first i focus on yeah people's stories i tell life stories life stories of young young people who are and yeah they are more or less living on some edge and um and maybe like one one thing i also find in common in all my all my work is i i somehow want to share the stories of like the lower working class, what yeah. it what it mean, means to actually have to struggle from paycheck to a paycheck. Um, I found Viani on on Instagram. Oh, I just really? started. Yeah, I, I just started following her. Maybe like a half a year before I reached out to her, and uh, and uh, through like following her. I noticed that she really likes to like share all all sides of her life there, like like write and also just shoot something about her life. We really wanted to like share and wasn't like also ashamed of of like parts of her life that that can be like controversial to some mm -hmm. some people, and uh, that made me basically reach inbox her, reach out to her. Yeah. And uh, and well, I, I, at that point, I probably still had like four or five people that I still were in touch with. I had decided that I when I when I start making something, yeah, that I want to start a production. But then after like meeting meeting her, having few few conversations with her, having dinner with her, I was like really sure that this is a this is a person who I wanna wanna work with. Uh, she was a, like a perfect combination of. Being like a really massively kind and empathetic person who has like a, just a lot of also roughness and edge in her yeah. in her life now and especially in her in her past. And then like maybe like two weeks after the like our last dinner, we just started shooting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I gotta ask. So, so when you go to create like a a story um what are some things that you look in like i guess 
the biggest struggle out of making documentaries is like keeping it captivating, but at the same time, not making it so like, um, you always got to have conflict, you know what I mean? But at the same time, like, um, like balance the positivity to the negativity, you know what I mean? Um, how, how have you been able to balance that? Like what, what is, have you been taught by some of your friends, like, um, how to, how to create a story? Like, is it easy? Uh, I'm sure that like my, my background in advertising, I used to do a lot of commercials and, uh, and, uh, yeah, well, well, all kinds of, all kinds of storytelling for, for corporate clients and well, mainly like yeah, charities and NGOs. Uh, so like storytelling has really been like a struggle for me, maybe, maybe like, uh, ever, but still at the same time, it's, it's, it's never, never easy. But what I'm, what I'm after, like when, when I start working with, with someone is, well, first of all, I'm I'm never looking for a, a victim. I need to, I need the person to to have, you know, as 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 you said, that there needs to be that balance between like a positive and 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 negative. For the movie to actually be interesting to audiences, it has to has has to have that like edge and also that like the negative negative side of the story so, so that there is that that there is that like conflict and that so that there is friction between good and good and bad but um but yeah I'm, I'm never looking for people who who are or act like a like a victim of life i'm looking yeah. for people who have something really interesting to like tell a view an interesting viewpoint to to your life they've gone through something that most people haven't gone through but clearly they are able to also take a step back and uh, see what they've gone through and somehow turn that into not into something good in a cliche way but they they are still able to take that step step, step back and uh, somehow analyze what they've done and talk about what they've done and all what's what's been done to them without them being being like bulldozed by the by the experience their their life life experience uh, and at the same time what i've like noticed i told you that i've like before before i decided that I really want to work with Diani. I was talking with like four or five people at the same time. And uh, there were like few people whose story might have even like, let's say like be like more provocative. Uh, they they maybe had like a, you know, like more edgy background or or their viewpoint on on, on things might be even like harder than than like hers but they they weren't storytellers so i'm oh, not the okay. only i'm not the, the only storyteller when i'm when i'm when i'm working and this has actually like this has i'd say that this is i didn't like when i started film, like making films and filmmaking i didn't think about this side of the game well, it's not a game, but this they side of like a the production at at all. I just noticed at some point that, and um, this is not like rocket science, but some people just aren't able to somehow be articulate and talk about their life in right. in a in a, like a clear clear way. That that well, some people just they're able to just give me give me like a like a list of events that they've gone through in life but they aren't able to like storyfy them yeah they, yeah they are they aren't able to like uh tell what wh what happened how i felt during it during it happened and how it how it like um what were the steps from a, a to z yeah yeah like uh, w within that 
within that moment, within that experience or whatever it is. I I totally um I totally feel that because I have there's there's somebody I'm working with right now on kind of a similar deal. It's gonna be um it's it's more music related though. But some people just have that touch where like you listen and you're like, there's a fucking story there. And like I know like it'd be very like it's it's just a lot like easier, you know what I mean? It just comes out of them, you know. Some people I I understand the um the A to the Z part. Like some people get, you know, a lot of stuff happens to them and they just lose memory and all that stuff. And um, but I definitely I definitely feel that. So I wanted to go a, a different route. Um, you brought up the fact that um, basically everybody has a technology nowadays. Everybody can make a short film. Everybody's got, you know, a smartphone, et cetera. But, you know, what do you think, it, what do you think like sets, sets you apart? Like, a person that does what you do versus somebody that just has their phone and they're just trying to like make something. I really don't fucking know. <laughs> I, I really, I really, really don't know. Well, I, I, I know, I know. Like, I mean, okay. you, you know how to pull a story out of somebody and, and, and make it naturally come out. Like I could tell. And, and like, you have a, um, like an artistic way of making, uh, like 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 I was talking about in the get, beginning, the atmosphere come through. Um, like somebody with their phone, they can only do so much, you know. And there's so many creators out there. Um, but what set you apart from the other ones was the fact that I felt something. Like I, I was like, whoa! Like this this hit me in a different way. <laughs> that's, that's amazing to hear. But I still don't know because that. Maybe it's like because I I don't have that like the most traditional background when it comes to filmmaking. Or I I just I I don't have the diploma, so I haven't like been. Well, that's that. good. Like I I think it's good because you look at things differently, you know. Yeah, but at the same at the same at the same time, like uh, uh, because I don't have that like three four years of like seeing seeing what other like peers are are doing. And uh, like somehow comparing why my work to theirs, even though my, I'm a, I'm a film buff, I I spent my youth in like film archive type of in, environments, watching films and and sleeping there as, as well, because usually those, those places have the most comfortable uh, like seats. Um, so of course I I have a lot of film in my blood. At the same time. Everything that I do, because it, it is, I, I see myself as, yeah, I see myself doing contemporary art, and uh, and what I do is self-expression. So I'm not emulating or copying or honoring anyone else beside me. Yeah. So maybe that that makes it hard for me to like somehow. Yeah, take that step back and look at my own work and uh, then try to analyze that since it is so me what, what, I, yeah, what well, I do. And I think, um, like, I, I was just talking to someone earlier about, like, how he has a, he's got a degree in music business. And, you know, he sounds very knowledgeable. Um, but so I feel like if I had a degree for music business, I would sometimes separate the art from a business. You know what I mean? It, it might get convoluted. You know what I mean? You're just doing it from the heart. You know what I mean? You're figuring it out. Like it, it, it shows through the film. You know what I mean? Um, and that's why I'm so like timid about going to film school because I'm like, I, I don't want to lose that part of me like that, that drive and make it more business oriented. You know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of people usually like when I tell them like what I what I do for a living, and and then of course their like next question is that have you done anything that I've seen? And then then we start a start a conversation about there being like at least two two separate film industries: the the one entertaining people and the one 
who isn't afraid to also like for example make people feel bored yeah at the, at the, yeah and you at the and you theater. brought that up you brought that up and i was like totally like that's i think it's cool because i think nowadays there, there's just so much fucking information coming just slow it down you know let the story breathe you know um, yeah exactly i actually feel that of course like jokingly well yeah jokingly that <laughs> that people come to that pitch black space to theater and then it's basically like a hostage hostage situation well a lot of them even though that they would like feel that the movie is just pure and all un unfiltered shit that there's so much like social pressure that they they just don't leave yeah. they they just sit there like politely and, and watch that so so basically i, I get well like 50 100 200 people to enter a space and uh i lock the door and then then we just start the projector <laughs> and, and I, I i make them I, I force them to look inside my head and also to look inside someone someone else's life story yeah yeah totally so, yeah so that gives me the kind of like the power to also and and the courage to also like if i want to if i feel that it's necessary to make them feel bored because i do think that that's the most punk rock thing to do nowadays that yeah. really slow it down and slow it down and make people look at the details and and see the details gaining gaining like power or becoming more more uh getting more oomph yeah. Now, did you um did you move? Well, you said you're in back and forth between New York and um, Helsinki. Helsinki. Did you decide to come to New York for these film projects? So, is this your full time gig? Uh, not entirely. I, I still basically there's like my my life divides into like three parts at the at the moment. So I do filmmaking and, and then I still do photography. I still do that and sell the sell the pictures. It's like documentary photography. I was just it's it's now June third and on on the first there's a polar bear polar bear lunch here here in the city. People basically go go have a swim in the in the Atlantic and I was there taking pictures of people there wearing funny costumes and then I, then I sell that to, to like magazines and, and newspapers nice. what, I, what I capture there so that's like the second part of my my like a, my life and then then I do still like work for different like charities Doctors Without Borders Worldwide Fund and and organizations like like that and that's how I also like that that's one third of my my life when when we look at it from from like an earning or perspective and yeah. then there's the then there's the filmmaking so if you were to um if you were to compare documentarians versus a netflix film wh what do you think like uh the biggest difference is like to be honest with you man like i'm not a huge like movie guy like I i'm more of a documentary person like i just they just draw me. I feel like I I get something out of it, and, and not not in a way of being selfish, but like a, it's like educational, like um, you know, it just hit it. It's different than watching like a Adam Sandler movie, Jack Black. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally get you. Like, I, I totally get you, and and where where you're coming from. Um, the reason why I started doing documentary films and also documentary photography. Is that like before that I had my own and I still have my like career in advertising. And in that world, everything is possible, possible, even though the, the stories that are created there are also based on truths, but they're very like chosen, chosen truths. So it is more about creating fictional stories still. So after that long stint in the in the industry 
like before I started doing what I now now do, I just felt that that truth has like more more kick to it than 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 the fictional side of uh, fictional side of, side of storytelling. So I just wanted everything to be as raw, as rough, and uh, as unpolished as possible. Yeah. I want to basically like slap slap people in the want to slap people in the face with yeah. the with the truth and uh, and so far I've, I wanted it to be like a yeah like a black and white really contrasty slap in the face. Oh yeah, a wet I wet felt hard it, slap in the face. <laughs> I'm happy about that. <laughs> I I felt it, and um, I want to bring up the fact that you said that uh you brought up the word punk and i'm just curious like do you have a punk background like yeah i i i do and that's that's probably like the the reason why i do still want to keep things raw um well it's more like a hardcore background so okay so like uh yeah that's that's what's like running in the in in my veins or that like my back spine was built on on uh US hardcore. Nice. Nice. So wait, did you attend like US hardcore shows back in the day? Were you still going back and forth? Yeah, I started coming here. I think my first time in the US was when I was 18 and I'm now 48. So a long long time ago. And after that, I started coming here at least two two times a two times a year. So that was maybe like ninety, somewhere like ninety five, ninety eight, so somewhere around there. And uh, things were still real then. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I was, I was, yeah, going to the, the shows. And so you were in the U.S. hardcore scene. We're gonna have to. Definitely dive deep into that. So, what were what were some, what were some bands that really uh, really grabbed your attention as a kid? Like, what mm. what brings this raw energy to your filmmaking? Like, the, well, the the legends like Chromatics and Minor Threat and uh, like people people like that. So the 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 legends. So they they were like the and, and like Bad Brains. Actually, like for some reason, Bad Brains was maybe like the the hugest influence. Like for me, was that they were like the OG squatters and like the the pioneers of of like a crusty punks. People just living in the living on the streets and uh, living living here in Thompson Square Park and and. Uh, just living, living life, living life worth telling about. Oh yeah. So, so when I think of like U.S. hardcore, I think of like a lot of old documentaries that I've seen. Did I mean growing up and now you know getting older? Have you watched those documentaries? Like, did that influence you on the path of wanting to be a filmmaker? Like, what led you Maybe to that not. point? Maybe not. Uh... What led me? I I don't remember the title at the moment, but I, I saw actually a, a documentary made of. But it was a yeah a documentary about Kurt Cobain. Oh, okay. I should I should now remember the title of that, but it was actually something that I I still every once in a while like go back to. But I should definitely like remember the name. But it was done. There were like some similarities to like what I what I do and how I approach my work. They were also everything was filmed in Seattle, and uh, there were as few as possible like talking heads. It was just more about what Seattle looked then when the film was done many many years ago, but still after. Cobain's, Cobain's death so it was more about giving the, the audience time to 
like listen and uh, look at Seattle, not through like romantic sound classes or like whatever, not through like rom romantic like a viewpoint, but just look at look at Seattle and everyday life and then use their own imagination, like putting putting the putting the head subjects on the on the streets that they they see. So so basically the answer is, is no. That um, I've seen the I've maybe like seen the documentaries, but they they haven't haven't like been a massive influence on me. I'm I'm more like a when it comes to like filmmaking, my influences are still well this is like a film buff answer, but like French films made in the fifties, sixties. If if there was one film I should watch, what do you think it what do you think it is? What was the one uh, that really hit you? I love the old Godard films. They're they're made in the late fifties and early early like sixties. Okay. Godard. The, title, the titles are are French, so I they are like fuse. There are there are a few 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 films that I really love. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah. Oh wait, is it Ush Ush Uchi Degard? Uh, no. <laughs> um, let me see. Is, 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 but the director's name is Jean Luc Godard, and I'm just trying to find the one film that I've adored always. Oh, okay, I see it. Yeah. Okay, it was cool. made in 1962, and uh, the English translation seems to be. My my life to live, my Viva life, la vie. So that's the one. Yeah, that that I really fucking love because that that also like yeah what I as as you since you saw the so Viani you you know that I really like these really long shots without any camera movement and this. Our film has the has the same same aesthetic. Camera doesn't have to move. People move. The actors move. The head subject moves, and, and the world moves. So the camera doesn't have to move. So you were a punk, right? You were into that type of music. What led you in the direction of um, filming on like people and their stories versus like musicians? Were you ever like a musician yourself, or never? But I really admire musicians. It's some something that I. I can yeah I can write I can I can shoot I can do like a lot of things when it comes to like artistic expression but music is something that is still out there like for me it's like an un unreachable element of like created creativity so Maybe someday I really want to be able to. You'll kill like, it. Take... I, I know you'll kill it. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to be able to, like, uh, yeah, find an instrument and uh, and that I would be so inspired of that I would want to, like, learn to learn to play. It. But not, no, no. Uh, no. So, so, uh, so what I was talking about was making a film on musicians. Like you brought up the Kurt yeah, Cobain yeah. thing, like. Um, making a musician, I'm uh, making a documentary about musicians. Like, has that has that ever been a thought in your mind? Do you think that's harder than what you do, or do you think that's just not um, what you want to do? Basically, since everything is like really personal, like what I, what I do and all the like the starting points have been like massively personal. The reason why I started doing what I do is to. When, when I was young, I was like massively shy. I, I, I was the kid who was who was never in the middle of things. I was always there in the outer circle, just looking in and uh, somehow reading, reading the space, reading the room, reading people, but not participating. Right. So then, then at some point, when I was like probably fifteen, sixteen, I, I just decided that 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 this shyness in me is really somehow stopping me from being me. And I started taking like gradual steps, just to somehow try to like find that the 
courage to go to open myself like to more like social situations and uh for that reason i also started doing street photography and uh, documentary photography i started to feel that i want to get more closer to people and uh read them in a different way but i still needed the camera there like between me and the people yeah so that it doesn't trigger my shyness yeah 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 so, so like that's, through through that yeah that's really relative to me too because i'm shy as all hell like if you put a camera on me i'd be like no <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so do you do you find yeah, yeah. hey go ahead go ahead yeah, so basically that's that's how I that's how I started. I I had the need to go to like go closer to to people, and the the first ever like project that I that I did was take pictures here in the in the city of people who sleep somewhere in the in the public, people who have the courage to just like close their close their eyes in the in the middle of the street on on steps on on park benches people sleep here well in the, in the summer people sleep here like in the most creative places and uh and i wasn't like into taking pictures of like homeless people but just people who for some other reason sleep on the on the streets or benches or in in coffee houses or like wherever but what was interesting in that I've thought of, thought about that like late, later. Uh, since I was so shy, I needed to take take pictures of people who have their eyes shut, so that they wouldn't look me back because that would have been like too much for me. I need to take pictures of people who are sleeping for that reason. But then, like gradually, I've been like moving closer and closer and closer to people, and now I'm in the in. I feel comfortable actually closing us going as close to people as possible that we are having the most intimate conversations and uh, there's like basically nothing separating me from them because it's right. all about how, how I like to work is it's all about sharing like I share and, and they share so like my filmmaking process is it's filmmaking process is a, a lot about just sharing and being like massively vulnerable and then then the audience never like hears my side of the story yeah the audience yeah. hears the, the other person's side but the process is like very dialogue based yeah no i i mean i caught that like in the beginning it sounds like you um like i'm i'm in the same spot where i'm like building a story on somebody and i do like zoom meetings until we meet in person but it sounds like you like um you like go out to dinner and like you really try to spend some really valuable time to get to know the yeah. to know the person. I need to get along with the with the people. Like honestly, I I want them to become like well, they few of them like have become my actual friends after the, after the project. But I really do need to get along with these these people because we yeah. do spend so much time together and the process is like so massively like intimate and and since I'm a I'm a tall tall Nordic guy but <laughs> bold headed guys six four and I mainly like work with with women so it's like really massively important for for these these people to feel feel oh, like cool. comfortable and, and safe and secure around me so so even for that reason but also just because I I like sharing and I like having conversations but also, like from the perspective of of safety, I I want to give them as much as they they give me, so that there is that mutual respect. Yeah, it, and I think I mean that now just listening to that. So you're six six what? Six four. So six four. You're very tall. I could just imagine like the first time you went to go get that that documentary slot with a, a woman, and they're like, oh man, like this what am I getting myself into? Because it's, it's a scary world out there, especially in New York. Um, the building trust, you know, like, wow. But now that you have I mean, a portfolio, now that you have like a portfolio, 
people won't look at you and be like, he's, he's not some scary dude trying to like attack me, you know? Still, uh, especially like now, maybe the past two years, it has become more and more and more challenging for, for me to like tell the stories that I, I want to tell at the moment. I'm, I'm working here, here in the, in, in Brooklyn, in the, in the Bushwick area that has, like the, the 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 wilder side of New oh York. yeah i was ju- i was Night, just in Bro- i was just in brooklyn a couple months ago walking by myself at midnight yeah it's a rough rough part of town yeah. and i'm i'm working there now doing like a documentary about the about the scene and especially like from the viewpoint of 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 like um poc people of color queer poor and many many of them are in, involved in in sex work so it me as a yes six six four straight scandinavian bald-headed jock looking dude <laughs> it hasn't yeah the trust building has has gotten harder and harder but uh but i've i've again like clearly like succeeded in in that but like we're working there and like understanding that for that community it's like really important that people don't just somehow enter the community take something and leave that they understand in in, the, in this case that i understand w- what are the kind of like the sacred areas of the community and what are the what are the rules and um, yeah, like the unwritten people... the unwritten rules, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like the the people who usually they have like moved from from somewhere else. They're in their twenties, and uh, and their life is is a struggle from paycheck to paycheck to rent to rent. They they start most of them start from 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 like actually having zero dollars on their bank account after like paying rent and and then do odd gigs at, at clubs and they dj every every now and then and and then every day, now and then they have the money day a phrase that i learned when i was like working with with diani doing the no doing the now does it does it get a little bit hard sometimes where you're you're like um you feel like the need to like help like like by listening to the story, you're like, oh, they they don't, they're having a hard time financially. I feel like that that would be like extremely hard for me because I'm like, now I hear the whole story. I hear the 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 problems. Like, do you try to help in that situation, or do you make it very clear that you're just making a film? Uh, what I basically do is like when when we agree that we're going to start working together, is that of course we like sign a sign a contract. And in that contract, I I make it clear to them, and and uh, and it is also just the fact that we, when the movie starts, like earning something, when when we start earning earning some money, that we split everything. That she, she or they or whoever the subject is, that they get fifty percent of all the all the earnings that the and film that, does. That's very generous. Like that. it's it's massively generous. But I'm 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 doing contemporary art. I'm not doing this. And maybe the, the, that's that that's not the kind of like the, the starting point for for that that specific thing. I just felt that this is to me this is art and uh, for them it's their fucking life. Yeah. So they're they're giving their life, like, to me, like for me to to make art of. So right. even though I spent two years, and so I spent a lot of time doing something, and I I spent a lot of lot of money. Movie making isn't isn't the, the cheapest art forms. Still, I feel that since it is their life that i i do want to i want them to get something something out of this and uh and i also like when the like for example when when we started promoting diani and we got the first film festival screenings and then we started getting like press 
there were like articles written written about her and uh so basically what what happened is that record labels like well known international label labels started contacting her and like offering her trial trial contracts nice. so that that is like the helping side again i i'm really aware of the concept white savior like a i, I don't, I don't want to i don't want to be that since i'm not that so i do want to help by giving given like opportunities more than like for example money but I, what i do like financially is that every day when we shoot i i i give give the head subject like something i have a, like a like a we have we have like a daily rate because i i know that they're that they live a life of of like financial struggle right uh, they as, as i told you that they they every month every month they start from zero so i i do wanna wanna be like polite and and uh like respect the time that they are investing in in this project because if they they wouldn't be doing this they're probably doing something something that would help them earn a living to earn a few bucks here here or there yeah so i'm breaking some rule some unwritten or written rule of like documentary filmmaking there but still i i want to like respect their respect the time that they are they are giving me and is investing in me yeah yeah like no, something. yeah i i think um I think the stories are super deep, you know, and it's, it's interesting getting your point of view on this because as an outsider, just a viewer, I'm just like, man, like, how do you even get to the level of somebody being that vulnerable to tell the story? You know what I mean? You can't just, you can't just hop on a zoom like this and be like, all right. So, um, when, when, uh, I don't know, you got like beat up as a kid or something like that by your parents. Like you can't just start there, <laughs> you know? Um, but it seems like, like you, you build that relationship of like, all right, let's go out to dinner or lunch and we'll get there. Yeah. The, the, how to build trust. Yeah. It takes, takes time, but, but then, but also, basically, what's also like important when it comes to our trust is that these people who want to work with me, they have a passion to tell their story. So I'm not. It's it's not again. Again, it's it's not a like a solo sport. Yeah. <laughs> that this is a this is a team, and I have a motive, and they have a motive, and I have a drive, and and they have a they have a drive to do this do this film yeah. and, and and to be heard and uh and uh they have to be into the idea of of like getting this spotlight and uh sharing their sharing their story so from that perspective like asking even like intimate questions isn't isn't that like horrifying and uh and i've also just just noticed that when you ask a question people very often answer that yeah. I, I try to not not make any i try to say i i i see myself i feel that i'm like really non-judgmental person so i just try to like emphasize that when i'm working with someone i just ask a question without any any like a moral or ethical like judgment in the in, in the question or in the tone of voice that i'm i'm like using so I just ask a question first. We build the trust. We we share. They talk about their life. I talk about my life, and uh, and we connect. And and then I more or less start start the interviewing process and ask straightforward questions. Yeah. And uh, so and people ask. Yeah. So we're we're looking towards the future for you. Um. What What do you want? Okay. I'm gonna rack your rack your mind right now. Ten years from now, 
what do you what do you want to have uh be accomplished with with filmmaking and just your creative endeavors like what what do you what do you want what do you want in your life in 10 years i want to basically just keep on doing what i'm what i'm doing now because i've i've again like the feedback that i get from the people who i work with the head subjects that that's the most like fulfilling thing for me like uh Biani got its premiere it was premiered in in harlem a harlem film festival and uh the screening was in a theater on 125th street here um Biani she saw her first ever movie in that same theater with her mom where a film about her life was premiered and screened for the first time whoa now now how did you feel at that moment were were you well, there next to her yeah I, I was there next to her and and, and when, she, when she told me that and her mother was there they they both were like crying and and uh and her mother and Biani also they were thanking me to so like letting her to like share share her story like basically where where like her life as as a film going individual st- started and uh and like a circle closed in 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 some some sense and uh and also like the well what happened after the after the release and after the articles like the 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 labels contacting her and she actually got getting getting like more chances in life than what were like previously given to her and uh and same has happened to like the other other people i've worked with my that first film that i i did when i was like just full of full of arrogance and uh confidence without <laughs> very, very little technical knowledge uh that that movie is about a a trans girl living in the in the Bronx and uh, a really rough background was able to channel that background into dance. She used to be and still is a like locally well known Vogue dancer and goes to balls and wins wins awards in that in that art form. Yeah, after that film was released, she was first invited to be a like a youth ambassador for UN for for trans rights, and then then she was an aspiring like a theater actress, and she after the film got the confidence to start going to auditions and started getting roles in of of Broadway productions. Then gradually. She started getting like side roles in TV productions, and uh, and now she's been playing in the like quite successful show called The Pose about the the, the Vogue scene in, in New York City in the in the eighties, and that's that's been running on on Fox. Dang! So, so that, you, so I'm assuming that uh, that gives you fulfillment without a doubt. Oh my God. It, Exactly. So that's 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 like more than than one one person can ever hope to like get as a reward from from like art and and work. So I just I just want to keep on doing that. I get the hugest buzz if I'm able to help people, help people and give give them platform and just give them opportunities and uh, and I'm not just like giving something because we we work in cooperation and uh and i just that not many people are giving giving the same like opportunities as as like me yeah white dude in 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 his 40s and uh with no no enemies i can go anywhere in the world and and people are more afraid of me than i'm i need to be of of them i've been yeah work working working like every everywhere and in in also in i've accidentally ended up ended up like shooting in front of crack houses and and uh 
and uh, had like, some like really nerve wracking, life threatening experiences. But clearly, Holy since shit. I'm a big dude, I can just walk away. Yeah, I was un- gonna say unarmed. I, I'm like five foot. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how well I would do in that. Yeah, my life was was in jeopardy, and I'm not like a, this. Isn't like a war story that I fail to somehow somehow look better and uh, more more something by the such as some some things that I have accidentally encountered in in life, and uh, because of my privileges, I've been able to like walk away with a uh, with a smile on my face and uh, just just. Uh, just few few like uh, pictures of barrels in in the back of my back of my head. <laughs> oh shit! No. Um, okay, this is gonna be a funny one. But what um, when you wake up in the morning, when you wake up, pull the sheets off. What what gets you out of bed in the morning? What what makes you smile? I'm the weirdest fucking thing when it comes to like waking up. I basically every morning I wake up in a hole. In a dark, dark place, what? and it exactly, and it's, it's it's such like a weird thing. Says I'm, I I feel, I see the world full of possibilities, and uh, and so I, I'm, I I have a like a deep side in me, but I'm I'm not like a, I don't wake up depressed. I just wake up in a in an absolute state of meaningless. Uh, something but then like 20 minutes later somehow my my brain kicks in and uh, some sort of hormones wherever they are where, where they've been in storage as <laughs> as vampires are in storage in their coffins my my hormones are in storage in similar places clearly they, they just somehow get out of bed and uh and start to uh, start affecting my brain and and then yeah 20 minutes later i'm 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 excited about like thoughts for some reason like people thoughts just seeing new possibilities in the in the world I'm really into like all, all sorts of just current affairs, just what's going on in, in the world and looking at them through really empathetic like lens. What does this mean from a like really universal viewpoint? So I, I'm a strong believer that and that we don't need to use like fancy fancy language, fancy vocabulary. It's more important to actually just like touch people's hearts and uh, use a language that everyone understands and uh, create like moments of connection. And through that, it doesn't matter if I'm in front of a crack house or in front of a multi-billionaire, we we can connect as, as strongly if the other one doesn't like feel that that I'm playing any games with them and uh and through that usually they don't have a need to like play games with me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it sounds like you're obviously very level headed when it comes down to like creativity and like um just like as a person. It sounds like you're pretty solid. Like I mean you got that you said that you're you do charity work. Right? What what yeah. is that? What what do you do there? I'm basically to like films, commercials, and uh, just like thinking if they they have a need that mm, there's a crisis somewhere in in the world, uh, and and they have a need to again I don't know if it's like an actual word but like to storify like their message they they need to tell that there's a there's a there's a crisis in a, in a country X, and I then start thinking about thinking about that like how to like create a story that somehow tells the tells the truth that there's this there is this crisis going on and how to like make that story and uh, the crisis to feel meaningful 
to people who just live their every every day everyday lives because we yeah. we all hear a lot of lot of like uh, these really cool and heartfelt stories but we don't feel that there's a connection to our own life what, what do you think um what do you think's lacking in most like documentaries like most like um like stories i guess like when you watch other people's documentaries like what what uh i don't know what do you think's lacking artistic weirdness i really i'm i'm so done with talking heads i would i would really not want to see a person and just look at their wrinkles <laughs> and uh well no, i i also like i have like in in all of my films i do also have talking heads like because I, I do want to, like people to also like see how the how the person like talks and and so forth but still artistic weirdness for some reason there is still such a like a i don't know what what, what is like a conversation people are somehow stuck in in that in that conversation of like what documentary filmmaking should be I'm so sure that there's a lot more artistic room than that has been like somehow explored. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. I mean like so when you say talking heads, you're just talking about somebody putting a camera in front of somebody and they're just like rambling on for an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then oh. then then that's that's just being like a spiced up with with archive material yeah yeah no i i feel that i mean um it it's one of those things where i'm just like i'm trying to watch a journey you know I mean? i'm trying to watch like uh um some type of um like i want to feel it like inside if i if i feel it inside like the documentary did its job you know what i mean yeah, yeah. i want to take people to places i i want them to to like a when they come to a theater, I'll give them a, a ticket, and and that ticket should, should be like taking them to space, to like different, different, different like realities, to a different reality for for like two hours or for an hour or two two hours. So, when you um, what the hell is I was gonna say. sorry, um, <laughs> who who are some directors that you look up to? Like, I mean, like who are some people that um. I don't know. You, you just look yeah, at like very know. few, like very, very few. few. I, I, like really hard for me to like. I don't know why. Like really hard for me to like idolize people. My entire mm -hmm. life, I've been like that. That that way of never really had an uh, yeah, like many idols. I maybe not even a director. Yeah. Maybe maybe even like yeah. a film that. Uh, I know you brought up. I the, still the one okay. earlier. Yeah. Well, I I still like. David Lynch, probably more even like him as a person okay. than like all of his like pieces, his like films. But I, I do like I do like him. But that's basically the only name that comes to my mind. And then what well, if there's a second one? Terrence Malick. Yeah, David Lynch and Terrence Malick. Terrence Malick. Malick, yeah. Okay, cool. Terrence Malick and Night of Cops is something that I really love. The camera work in that film is something that inspires me. And then just David Lynch and his capable like his way of like yeah, taking people to to like visit planets out there. Like yeah, taking yeah. people to places and uh not telling people where they're going, just fucking taking them there and uh, making feel, and also yeah, having having the courage to make feel make people feel uncomfortable. Yeah, when they're when they're just like sitting there and taking art in. So, so I'm gonna shoot you a recommendation. Um, I was just talking to somebody. This podcast, I was like, oh, is it is it happening or not? Because I, yeah, anyway. Anyway, so I, I was talking to someone earlier, and 
Um, he's in this documentary film called um, Exiled by Choice. It's a really cool story. Um, it was like a documentary's first take at filming something, and it came out great. Like he, um, he basically went with a young kid that has never traveled in his whole life and a dude that um this, like has been hitchhiking for the last like five, 10 years. And basically he just follows with his camera and they're like hopping on trains and all this crazy stuff. And like it, it's one of those documentaries where I watch and I was like, Holy shit. Like if talk about a story, man. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to shoot that. that. Amazing. Yeah. I'm going to shoot that to you afterwards, but it, it's, um, it was really just something that I, as I don't know, like, like your film, like I just felt something there. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, actually it sounds exactly some, like something that I really most, but, uh, but and, and on top and on top of that, like if you ever want to go hitchhiking on a train, I got you now. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, I, uh, I, honestly, I have to. I have to like take a look at that. It sounds really fucking good. So I, I have to. I have to like yeah, find that and watch that. Yeah, I'll send it to you right after. Um, but uh, yeah, is there anything that you want to shoot back at me? Anything you want to promote? Uh, you know, where are you at if somebody wants to hire you, etc. People can just people can can find me like uh, I have a have, of course as, as we all do have a presence <laughs> online, and just by googling my name Marko Vorinen, people can people can find me and, and all the all the necessary details about what I'm what I've done and what I'm doing and and what I'm doing in the what I'm doing now and what I'm doing in the future. I'm I'm again I told you that I'm working on like three different different films at the moment. But I'm unfortunately because I, I, I'm not supposed to be like working on such many, so, so many projects at the same time. But I'm also I, I know that I'm I'm st I'm going to start working on yet another another one <laughs> more in, you, in, in the fall in the fall next year or this 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 year. Uh, so for for 2023, I'm 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 going to go to Japan to Tokyo to work. Whoa. So that's, to, that's to meet be somebody, that I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, Holy that's, that's something shit. that I'm really looking forward to. So I'm now basically I'm, I'm finalizing a film that I did in Paris, made in Paris a year ago, like during the the lockdowns, and uh, and yeah, I'm working on a, on a project here in the in, in New York City in the in the Bushwick area, and and then to Tokyo after. Oh, wow, so after so you're like a. You get you basically have your camera gear with you, and you just kind of travel wherever the world takes you. Yeah, no shit. That is so cool. Yeah. Um. 